Hui Hui, it's Louis D again, and for the very first time, I will be doing a video that is mainly a reading vlog. Hooray! So I thought, like, what kind of like content can I do for a Philboard's BOTM? And I decided, I think I'm just gonna do like a reading vlog. So. For October 2019, our book of the month of Phil Borgs would be Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I've been wanting to read this book for quite some time already. A lot of my fellow bookish folks think that it's great. And I've always wanted to read it because it is set in Vermont. And I've always dreamt of like traveling to Vermont. It's like one of the first states that I would love to visit when I go to the United States. And it's hashtag travel goals, so I do hope to enjoy it. Hoorah! Stay tuned. like the first part of Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I don't think it was like the first chapter because when I flipped to the following page I saw the number one. I think that is the official first chapter of the book. Every now and then I guess there will be some sort of like flashbacks. You would see like the dates like they go back in 1930s. So so far what I saw is it is about like a very intelligent girl from New York, she goes to Vermont, lucky for her, and unfortunately, things just didn't go as it seems. I guess it's because of Truly Devious, so I guess I just have to watch out and read the next parts to find out more. So stay tuned, and hopefully uh, we can, you know, be excited about what's gonna happen next. I hope I'm gonna get thrilled and yeah, I'm gonna read more of it. So stay tuned. Wow. So folks, I am currently wearing a shirt that matches the color of the book cover. I'll pan it down below. As you can see it's color blue and it even says Denver. What up, what up, Colorado folks? So, so far I've read like a couple of chapters of Truly Devious. I know I'm a super slow reader. And so far, um, it's the, I like the world building. And by the way, I've read like a couple of chapters yet. There are like some flashback scenes. So 
they're quite chunky for me. <laughs> anyway, I like the world building in terms of the story. I'm not so like fascinated yet about like the plot. I guess it, I'm not sure if it's the way it was written, but hopefully when I get to read more, I would be more intrigued, be more fascinated with the scenes. But I really love the world. I love how Maureen Johnson described, you know, Ellingham University or Ellingham School. So I definitely am hoping to visit Vermont one day. So, <laughs> hooray! So today, or rather this week, has been very tiring at work. Hopefully I'd be able to catch up on reading more pages of Truly Devious. And I'm going to be uploading a video soon, so just check it out on my channel. Subscribe to Lewisity. I am thinking once I've already uploaded this, I've uploaded that one. Anyway, just telling you a day in my life, or rather an evening in my life, because it's already evening now. <laughs> So it's been days since I've been reading Truly Devious and so far mm, I'm not exactly happy about it because I've read like 160 plus or 170 pages and to me I like the world setting, I like the build up, I like the way Vermont was described, I still would love to go there but in terms of you know, like the mystery, it doesn't really intrigue me. It did intrigue me a bit when I read that part wherein they sailed somewhere, you know, the boat sailed away and it kind of made me curious, but not yet really there, you know what I mean? But the characters are very enjoyable. I feel like I personally would like them and I think, you know, they were described well, I guess. But I'm not really much of a character inclined person you know i mean in terms of what makes a great book so but yeah i think they're great the characters are great not exactly sure if they build a lot in the story which is not really a bad thing i feel like it's really that the plot and the way the story is written that can really make a great book and having characters that would make you you know uh, react would just be kind of a bonus so We'll see what happens with the rest of the book. Keep it posted. Whoa. a little bit of a reading update now i'm more than 200 pages already with truly devious and i would say that the book is getting better you know there's already the mystery that is unfolding Hayes died so i'm guessing truly devious is really serious about the things that they're doing hmm who could truly devious be now i'm <clears throat> i'm getting more intrigued I would say and it's a good thing because at first I thought like the book was quite slow you know I could care less about what was happening I mean the characters were cool I love Vermont but it, I thought like it's just gonna end there but now the book just got better and there's more mystery vibes in it which is what I was expecting so 
hopefully throughout this book it's just gonna go through that direction and it will be intense and it will be great so i'll keep you posted folks Whoa. so i just got to the part wherein david and stevie were making out Ooh, so what could that be? So you folks got to read to find out. But anyway, the reason why I wanted to kind of like just say this right away, well, obviously I'm going to be saying it at some point, but I kind of just want to, you know, say it now because I don't want to forget it. I just like what Stevie said about how, you know, the brain works, you know, because we all know Stevie's interested with crime and, you know, um, testimonies you know um you know when a witness testifies it's actually an interesting insight that i found you know how the brain works kind of like she mentioned about how at times people you know well i know this is kind of like cliche but sometimes people can't think straight when they're like stressed or when people started saying things about something it suddenly changes like for example um, person A is going to say something to person B. It's going to be different when person A is going to say it to person C. And I think that actually can happen in real life. Sometimes I even like suddenly thought about uh, hindsight bias, wherein at times, let's just say, uh, person, you're, you guys are like in one group. Person A would say some things about person B, like person A would give uh, negative vibes, would give all those. Um, you know, bad uh, stares or like those mean looks or whatsoever that means something. But then, like, person C wouldn't notice it. And then, yes, um, because person A started saying those things, person C realized, oh yeah, I didn't think of that, but now I think I notice it. So that's what I'm talking about when I say hindsight bias. And I hope that, you know, this book continues in giving us those, you know, uh, mystery vibes. Or let's just say, I hope that I just, you know, continue getting engaged and getting connected to the book. That's a huge factor for me whenever I read books, especially that this is going to be like a mystery thriller, a YA boarding school kind of book. And I still would love to go to Vermont, and I'm hoping that uh, it would be really exciting. And I also love the part we're in, uh, Sergeant uh, Samuel Arnold, or, well, I should say Agent Samuel Arnold, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and then, you know, Flora, who happens to be a great friend of Iris Elham. Now, it kind of makes me think now if Flora is indeed a friend, or is she a foe? Well, we're going to find out. I'm going to find out. And you guys, I definitely encourage you to read if you want to know what am I speaking here. So I'll catch you folks later. Cool. Since I'm more than 300 pages already and reading Truly Devious, it is time for me to know what is the next book that I'm going to read. Ooh. And this will be with the help of our fake jar. So you folks will personally see the next book that I'm going to pick in this TBR chore. So you will be witnessing it. So what will it be? Okay? I'm totally looking at the viewfinder and the lens. So here you go. I'm not looking. Okay, which right do it? Okay, I'm not looking. <laughs> so you guys will see. Alright. Moment of truth. Okay, so this is the next book that I'm going to read. Guys, see it? It's Mapping the Bones by Jane Yolen. So it's been a while folks, now it's just a bit of an update, I just want to give a bit of a trigger warning because um, I just read a scene from like the past, okay, it was during the time of Albert Ellingham, and they depicted like a death penalty scene 
which vividly talk about blood. So if blood isn't really your thing, then that's true. So I just finished reading Truly Devious and I knew that there's something about David, something is cryptic about him, and I know that there was something about him that's just, you know, not proper. I just had that, like, gut feel. Now, I'm just going to, like, share you folks my overall thoughts about the book. I was actually quite disappointed, like, kind of like the things that I mentioned during the first part of the, this video, wherein I felt like, in terms of the thrill, it was quite slow. It kind of got, let me just like move somewhere. Cause it's kind of like getting noisy here. Hold on. And so as I was saying, I was quite disappointed with the book because I felt like the thrill, the pace of it was quite slow. It was just in the 16th chapter wherein things started becoming more intense. That part was quite lovely. Okay. And what else are the other things at this point? It just lacked kind of like, because when it comes to thrillers, it makes, it should make me intrigued. And for the most part, like, it didn't intrigue me that much, like, what was happening with the case that, you know, Stevie's trying to solve about, like, eight decades ago. And what else can I say about the book that like disappointed me. In terms of the characters, they're quite lovely, but to me, it's just not enough for me to kind of like, it didn't give me like that much emotions, like connection and bringing and elevating the story. You know, it's like they're lovely, but they didn't really contribute, which to me is okay. I mean, because I'm not really a character driven person, so it's not like a minus point, but just because usually when you know, characters would give something, like, make me feel something. I, it's a bonus because they made me feel something. So, but to me, the characters were fine as they are. They are what they are. So I really appreciate it. And what else can I say? It's just, it's just that, to me, the whole 1930s and you know, the what's happening right now, it, it just doesn't make sense to me yet. Probably in Vanishing Stair it will. But I felt like for me, they should be like two different stories. Just to me, that's how I see it right now. So, but the good things about this book would be like the world. I really love the setup. I, I, it's, it's weird because I think Ellingham Academy you know, kind of needs to be like a spooky, interesting, mysterious world. But for me, it's like, it's just a beautiful school for me. And I want to go to Vermont. I want to like go through these like cities, Montpelier, Burlington, you know, be on top of the hills, the top of the mountains, which was a good thing for me. And like I said, the characters were lovely. They may not have essentially had an, they weren't written in a way uh, that, would make he, that would that kind of boost the story, but they're lovely characters. Now, like to me, it just goes back to like writing styles. So, yeah, but I'm kind of like debating whether I'm going to be buying Vanishing Stare. So, comment down below if you think that I still should give it a shot. Um, but that's the thing for me with all these like hype books i guess i have yet to read a YA thriller that or like a YA mystery that will intrigue me um but yeah i'm kind of like debating whether i should still continue or not but we'll see we'll see how time is gonna happen i'm hoping that if i continue with the series it's gonna get better so we'll see about that because i guess if i'm gonna be reading vanishing stare my expectations are already met. <laughs> Considering that there were parts that, you know, boosted like when the time when Hayes died and the world building and kind of like summing up the things that needs to improve, I think I would say I'm going to give this book three out of five stars. Exactly three. Comment down below your thoughts about the book. And if you guys have any suggestions, like if I should continue with the series or not, how did you guys um, find the book? How was your experience? 
So I guess that's about it for this reading vlog. I hope you folks enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos. Also, be linking down my social media accounts and stuff, so feel free to check me out there and follow me there as well. As always, thank you super much for watching. Let us continue seeking for wisdom and unleash the reader in you. Whoop. Bye, all. Whoop.